When the ship had anchored, I informed him I was going to wait on the commander-in-chief and requested to know if I could convey any message from him. He desired me to return his thanks to Lord Keith for the kind intentions he had expressed towards him in his letters to me and to say he was extremely anxious to see his lordship if it could be done with propriety. On delivering his message to Lord Keith, he answered, I would wait upon him with much pleasure, but to tell you the truth, I have as yet received no instructions as to the manner in which he is to be treated, and until I do receive these, I cannot well visit him. He then gave me some precautionary orders to prevent his escape or any attempt to effect it, from which I gave the extracts below. In addition to the orders already received, you are to pay the strictest regard and attention to the directions contained in the enclosed extract of a letter from the Secretary of the Admiralty. If General Gorgo has not already been taken out of the Slaney, you are to cause him to be removed immediately into the ship you command. I enclose for your information a copy of a general order that I have issued forbidding communication with the ship you command, and it's my intention to order the Liffey and Eurotas to anchor near you and to rope guard. Extract of letter from the Secretary of the Admiralty to Admiral Viscount Keith, dated 24th of July, 1815. Referring your lordship to Mr. Croker's letter of the first instant, respecting Bonaparte, I am to signify their lordship's directions to you to give the most positive orders to Captain Maitland to prevent all communication, whatever, with the shore, but through him and by him through your lordship, and on no account to permit any person whatsoever to go on board the ship without your lordship's permission given in writing for that purpose which permission for obvious reasons will only be granted in such cases as the public service may require and proper measures are to be taken to prevent boats and small craft from crowding near the Belrefin. Your lordship will restrict the captains and commanders of your squadron from communicating until further orders with the Belrefin. There was also enclosed the following copy of a memorandum addressed to the respective captains of H.M. ships Liffey and Eurotas, Ville de Paris, in Amouaz, 26th July, 1815 memo. Liffey and Eurotas are to take up an anchorage on each side of the Balrofen at a convenient distance and observe the following directions as well for the purpose of preventing the escape of Bonaparte or any of his suite from that ship, as for restraining shore boats and others from approaching too close to her either from curiosity or any other motive. A constant watch of an officer, a quarter watch, and double sentinels are to be kept by day, as well as the boat man and on the long side, in constant readiness as a guard boat. The same precaution is to be observed all night, with the exception that one of the boats in charge of a lieutenant is to row guard and to be relieved every hour. No shore boats or others are to be suffered, either by night or by day, to approach near the Belrefin than one cable's length, and and no boats are to be permitted to loiter about the ship, even at that distance, either from curiosity or any other motive. Neither the captains of the Liffey or Eurotas, nor any other officer belonging to those or any other ships are to go on board the Belrefin, either to visit or on any pretense whatever, without permission from me in writing. Signed, Keith Admiral. When I returned on board, I found the frigates had taken their positions as directed in the last order and the boats were endeavoring as much as possible to keep the shore boats at the specified distance from the ship. I stated to Bonaparte what Lord Keith had said, to which he answered, I'm extremely anxious to see the Admiral, and therefore beg he will not stand upon ceremony. I shall be satisfied to be treated as a private person until the British government has determined in what light I am to be considered. He then complained of the two frigates being placed as guard ships over him. As if, said he, I were not perfectly secure on board a British line of battleship, and added, the guard ship's boats have been firing musketry all evening to keep the shore boats at a distance. It disturbs and distresses me, and I shall be obliged to you to prevent it if it lies in your power. I immediately sent the captains of the frigates to put a stop to the firing. On the 27th of July, I received a letter from the Secretary of the Admiralty, of which I give an abstract. I received and laid before my Lord's Commissioners of the Admiralty your letter of yesterday's date, reporting your arrival in the Belrefin in Torbay, accompanied by the Myrmidon, having on board Napoleon Bonaparte's suite, and transmitting a copy of a letter you had addressed to 
Admiral Lord Keith reporting your proceedings under the various circumstances which occurred prior to this embarkation, of which their lordships have been pleased to direct me to signify their approval. <laughs>